This is Work University, Episode 38. This is Work University, and I'm Annalisa Felix. This is where I interview people from various employment backgrounds and get the inside scoop on what their job is really like. If you're just getting into the workforce, or if you're curious about getting into something new, listen up. Today we are speaking with Martin Martinez, who is a Congressional Relations Officer. Hello, Martin. Welcome. Hi. Good evening, Annalisa. What is a Congressional Relations Officer? What's your day-to-day? Well, first off, Annalisa, I want to appreciate you having me on um, and being able to give a a brief overview of of what it means to be a Congressional Relations Officer. As somebody who is very passionate about government and, and, and government relations, uh, I really uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, so I'm, my title is a Congressional Relations Officer for the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Office of Congressional Legislative Affairs Office. And my main duty is to be a conduit for uh, Congress and uh, the Veterans Affairs Department with regards to legislative relations or uh, any kind of oversight activities that uh, Congress is doing. And so, and, and my main duty is to uh, work with congressional staff if they are working on a proposal or legislation and they want to have uh, a VA to, to look at it and to see if it's workable, if it's something that we would be able to do if enacted. Um, I would uh, farm it out essentially to our subject matter experts, uh, depending on what the issue is, if it's if it's uh, education, it would be to uh, the education office. They would review it, and then uh, our general counsel, our lawyers would review it, and then they would send it back to me. I would look at it for uh, another review, make sure that um, the product looks good, and then that's what I would send over to congressional staff. And then the other part of my job is to prepare witnesses and uh, ensure clearance of written testimony, uh, clears the VA, clears uh, the administration, and gets sent over to Congress before the congressional hearing. Um, Other duties uh, entail um, helping out the Congressional Budget Office with uh, questions regarding the budget uh, for a particular bill. The Congressional Budget Office, uh, essentially what they do is they score legislation. What that means is they come up with an estimate for how much of a, of a bill is going to cost. And what they'll do is they'll reach out to me and, a mem- and uh, many of my colleagues, and they'll ask a question related to the bill, and they'll use the response, you know, and based on that response, usually they'll come up with uh, an estimate of the, of the legislation. It helps them come up with the, legislation, uh, the cost of the legislation. Um, so you're, at any time, you're dealing with, a stack of different bills, different, you have to manage um, what budgets are happening and different departments. And then are do you, do you have any travel? No. So uh, I haven't done any travel uh, yet. It, it, there, there is that opportunity at times, uh, but I haven't, I haven't done that. Most of my job requires me staying at the office or, you know, before COVID, it was going over and and meeting with staff and um, you know coordinating with them, communicating with them in person, um, and now we do it uh, via virtual, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. And so you're in uh, Washington D.C., correct? That is correct. Okay. And being working with the VA, does your position require that you are a veteran? No, so that's one of the unique things about the VA. Even though a majority of of the employees here at at Veterans Affairs Department are veterans, not all of them are, and uh, you don't have to be a veteran to to work at the VA. And but but I would say and is is you definitely have to have a passion for for veterans and and everyday veterans and non veterans that that I work with um, who are employees. Uh, they they come in uh, trying to figure out how do I make a veteran's life better, mm-hmm. um, and and so you you definitely have to have that passion passion whether it's in um, you know the healthcare side or the benefit side or or mm-hmm. me on the on the policy side. 
So I'm sure that being a veteran yourself gives you a, a certain perspective or advantage. It, it does, and it also gives me um, a sense of, of, of really accomplishment and uh, a sense of, like, I'm actually contributing to the lives of, of my, my former brothers and sisters in arms. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I uh, – a little background, uh, I was in the Marine Corps uh, before I got into government relations, and I remember – uh, when I was getting ready to leave my unit, they, they, they had me, you know, come up in front of everyone and give a little, you know, going away speech. And one of the things that I told them is I may be done serving my country in uniform, but I'm not done serving my country uh, just entirely. And, and what I meant by that is I, I intend to serve in, in government and, um, and, and I am, and I'm continuing to serve in government. Going back to, um, getting out of the service, then what did you do? Like, what was your your path getting here? Because this, you know, sounds like a very interesting position. Uh, well, the path certainly wasn't, I would say, traditional. Uh, mostly uh, some the, – the usual uh, trajectory is you, you, go to, you go to college, you get a bachelor's degree most, most of the time – you get an internship on the Hill, uh, you know, whether working for a congressman, a senator, or even doing a White House internship, and, and you just you get experience in, in legislative affairs, and then eventually you you know if there's an opening, then you can you work in Congress or you work in the executive branch. Uh, my trajectory was took a left, it took a right turn and a U turn. <laughs> um, I I was a Marine musician stationed in uh, at what they call Marine Barracks 8th and I. I was a drummer for the Marine, the Commandant Zone Drum and Bugle Corps. And um, after I, you know, I it was I was getting out of the military, I had to figure out what to do with my life. And I decided that I was going to finish school, get my bachelor's degree, and I was going to get it in political science because I've always been interested in, in politics and government. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I went to college at George Washington University got, uh, you, you know, using the GI Bill and the Yellow Ribbon Program and and then got an internship on the Hill, uh, working for a congressman for a little bit, and then I worked for a, a senator, and then an opportunity came up to, to work at the VA and the Legislative Affairs Office, and I took it, and they figured I was, I was right for the job, and, and I've been here for uh, a little over five years. Now, in this curvy path to getting to where you're going were there any kind of bumps in the road and did you have a vision of being where you are now or it just kind of happened and maybe any interesting stories that uh, you encountered along the way well I think the the bump in the road is um, there's there is that saying that it's it's not it, it's not what you know it's who you know and and there is some truth to that especially in in the town of DC mm-hmm. um, but there also it, there there's a lot of uh, there's a required skill set uh, whether it be networking, being able to communicate effectively, be able to write, and and just knowing you've got to be at the right place at the right time, uh, whether it be working in the executive branch or working in Congress, because a lot of people who who work in these positions they're extremely intelligent, extremely. Mm-hmm. Uh, driven and and it's a I, it's a it's a very very high intensity uh, you know job job market but it's a it's a very very worthwhile uh, career and, and so the the bump that I kind of ran into was none of my family colleagues in music and you know no one knew anything about really the inside of politics and and, and government. And so I had to find my own way. I had to talk to people that, you know, either either cold called or uh, do informational interviews with, with chiefs of staffs of, of, of uh, members of Congress and mm-hmm. just kind of learn on, on my own. And, and a lot of people do that here in, in D.C. Uh, mm-hmm. in government relations field. Are there any uh, informational interviews that stand out in your mind since um, this is what we're doing right now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I do. I did some inter, some informational interviews with some some Texas congressmen, uh, chiefs of staff, and they were they were very friendly. And 
you know, they, they looked at my resume and unfortunately, you know, there weren't any, any spots available that, that, that they knew of, but they basically, you know, they told me to, to, to keep my head down, keep pushing. And, uh, and I did, I, I was, I was always told and, and I believe, and I always tell this to people who, who want to get a job in, in government relations. Um, and, and the phrase is, if you want a job, then you got to go out there and, and get it. You may not get it tomorrow. You may not get it next week. You may not even get it at the end of the year. But if, if you want it, you'll eventually get it. And, and that's the mindset that I was told to have. And, and I did. Um, and eventually I got a, a job that I wanted working on the Hill. And, and I also, and then I got, you know, another great job uh, working at the VA. So what do you like the most about your position? Oh, uh, the, one of the best things that I love about my position is, being able to, on a day-to-day basis, work with congressional staff, congressional offices, working on ways to uh, help veterans, you know, whether it be with, with, with health care, with, with education. Um, education is my bellywick. I've always been passionate about, about education, all, all the way from, from K through 12 and, and, and with regards to the GI Bill, it's, it's for, for college and, and mm-hmm. above. And one of the greatest things to, to see is to eventually, hopefully, see a a bill become become law that you helped work on with with other congressional staff, and then you worked on uh, to get it to get it cleared through the, the VA in terms of uh, official positions. And seeing that become law is, and and once that become law. You've you've just helped out thousands of thousands of veterans um, and and service members, and that's that's the the greatest feeling uh, I I got yeah. and I, I get almost every day when I when I talk to congressional staff. Sounds like you get a real sense of pride. You did mention some things about you know networking and meeting people. Um, what else would you advise people who want to be uh, in your position? You know, my my job right now it's it's a non political job, and and so I work with both Republicans, Democrats, independents, uh, staff offices all, all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but but my experience came from the the political side, working for uh, actual members, and I got my foot in the door by becoming an intern, uh, an unpaid mm-hmm. intern at that. Mm-hmm. And um, so you know, moving from a the the military getting paid the first and the fifteenth, all of a sudden not getting paid. That was uh, that was quite the uh, that was quite the adjustment. But but I was I was very focused on on being in, in government relations and being in politics. So I knew what I was getting into, uh, at least a little bit. You know what I would tell folks is you you gotta you gotta call and don't be afraid to call, even if it's a cold call. Congressional offices. And and say you know I, how do I how can I help out with your office you know can I be an intern um, and and I started out you know I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps and when I worked then when I got out of the military and had my first job on the Hill my duties were uh, passing out uh, newspapers and and making coffee and and greeting uh, guests at the at the door you know so mm-hmm. uh no you know in a, in addition to just calling and, and and being an intern the next thing is to to not make it seem like anything you you, you know you're you're above everything right um, you know uh you, you got to be motivated and, and and positive of of whatever job responsibility responsibility you're you're doing um because a lot of that gets looked at in this field well, Martin, I want to thank you first and foremost. Thank you for your service, and uh, thank you for spending time with me to give me some insight on what it's like to actually be a congressional relations officer and and what it's like and what it means. Because this may be an introduction of a position to somebody who doesn't even know it exists. Absolutely, and and thank you very much for having me on. Thanks for listening. If you'd like me to look into a particular job, let me know. Contact me at hello at workuniversity.org.